Ever since the current crisis began in Ukraine, the world has shuddered in dread and anticipation, terrified that at any moment the celebs might get involved. And we all knew that it was bound to happen. And it only took a few weeks of the pandemic before Charlize Theron and her celebrity friends recorded a video of themselves singing Imagine, a rendition so horrible, you'll remember, so off-key and tone-deaf in every sense of the term, that it somehow managed to be even worse than the original version. So what would the celebs do um, about Ukraine? That was the question. What song would they sing? What PSA would they record? These are the questions that plagued us, and now they've been answered. And I'm afraid that it's, it's, it's far worse than you could have ever imagined. Anna Lynn McCord is an actress that I've never heard of, but she's apparently a- appeared in many films. Um, her Wikipedia informs me that she, is also, uh, she was also a Teen Choice Award nominee in 2009. So her resume is undoubtedly impressive, but it can do nothing to rescue what I'm about to play for you. Miss McCord has apparently been watching the events unfold across the ocean and has arrived at the conclusion that whatever the particulars of this geopolitical conflict, really it's all about her. She may not be a foreign policy expert, mind you, but she does know, based on her experience, that she is somehow at the center of it. Just as she may not be an astronomer by trade, but she still knows that the Earth and the Sun and all of the stars revolve around her. Anna Lynn McCord subscribes to the McCordiocentric theory of the universe, you might say. And that's what led her to record and publish this video. Your challenge here will be to listen to it for more than five seconds without dying of cringe. In fact, in penance for all of our sins, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to let this play for 80 seconds. And don't look away. Don't cover your ears. Don't turn off the, the, this off. We're going to endure this together and, and be better for it in our suffering. Watch. Dear President Vladimir Putin, I'm so sorry that I was not your mother. If I was your mother, you would have been so loved held in the arms of joyous light. Never would the story's plight, the world unfurled before our eyes, a pure demise of nations sitting peaceful under a night sky. If I was your mother, the world would have been warm, so much laughter and joy and nothing would harm. I can't imagine the stain, the soul stealing pain that the little boy you must have seen and believed and the formulation of thought quickly taught that you lived in a cruel, unjust world. Is this why you now decide no one will get the best of you? I can't do it anymore. I don't know. We didn't get 80 seconds in. I just, I can't. Um, So breaking news for you. Putin has heard this poem and is now launching a full-scale nuclear attack against the United States because of it. And you can hardly blame him. I actually welcome it. Well, you know, this might shock you to learn, but I'm not really a morning person or an afternoon or evening person or really a person at any time of day. But I have a hard time waking up, especially and starting the day without something to jumpstart my mornings. Well, I found the solution. And if you're looking for something similar, you need to check out Cacao Bliss. Cacao Bliss is a cacao based superfood powder that only has seven milligrams of caffeine and one gram of sugar. It's composed of 10 different superfoods that are proven to improve your energy, focus, mood and boost your metabolism to drink all you have to do is mix in the powder with some hot water, or if you'd like, some uh, nut milk, whatever you want. Now you could use an old fashioned spoon, but I like to keep things a little bit classier, and I use one of these bad boys. So, oh shit. Um, well, how is this supposed to work? Oh, okay, I guess you, hold on. All right, what you wanna do, I wanted to actually demonstrate, because it's it's actually dangerous to have really hot boiling water that sprays all over the place. I'm, I am right now have, have third degree burns. I'm in terrible pain, but um, you, you want to put it in the cup first and then turn it on. Anyway, let's take a sip. Mmm, tastes just like cacao. If you'd like to give Cacao Bliss a try, use the link in the description below and use my code Matt for 15% off your order. Again, click the link below and use code Matt at checkout for 15% off your order. Now. There are times in life when you encounter something so crazy, so deranged, that your mind kind of shuts down and prevents you from confronting and comprehending the insanity in its fullness. And a sentence like, I'm so sorry I was not your mother, has just that effect. It's the kind of thought that only a lunatic could have in a situation like this, much less say out loud on video. It's therefore not really possible for a rational person to understand the thought process that went into this. I mean, did she actually imagine a possible scenario where Putin would be scrolling Twitter, stumble across her poem, listen to it, and be, like, swayed by it? Did she imagine Putin T 
tears welling up in his eyes, calling his generals and saying, never mind, the war's off. I choose laughter and joy instead. Come, let us all clasp hands and sing songs of love and hope. Is that what she thought would happen? Perhaps. Though it's more likely that she simply intended to get a bunch of likes and retweets and pats on the back from an adoring public, which was also a delusional hope. She probably hadn't thought it through much more than that. Also, I I can't help but note the fact that Anna, from what I can tell based on her available biography, um, is not a mother. So she is a childless 35-year-old woman, and yet she's quite sure that her parenting skills, if only she had children, would be so flawless that she could, as she says in her poem, create a utopia of, quote, nations sitting peaceful under a night sky. That's how good of a mother she would be. I remember when I had similar delusions about my own parenting skills. Maybe not quite that megalomaniacal, but, you know, close enough. And then I realized that it's hard enough to get my own kids to go to bed and sleep peacefully under a night sky, much less entire nations. I still have not mastered that eight years in. How do you get kids to just go to bed and sleep peacefully? I I, I haven't done it one time. I have not succeeded yet. Entire nations, the whole world? Forget about it. Now, the best and most generous possible interpretation of this poem is that Anna McCord is sort of sweetly clueless in a naive, feminine, maternalistic sort of way. And she thinks that snuggles and hugs can solve any problem, doesn't realize that a a tendency towards conflict and land disputes and tribalism and warfare are deeply ingrained in the human psyche. All of the snuggles in the world won't change that. But if this was just rooted in a sort of optimistic yet ignorant and simple-minded misunderstanding of human nature, it would perhaps not be worthy of the same level of mockery that it's receiving. Because it's well-intentioned, you know, just really stupid. Unfortunately, I, I think the truth is not quite so rosy for Anna McCord. It is, as usual, less a matter of naive innocence than of extreme suffocating narcissism. A narcissism so immense in its severity and scope that she not only believes she could single-handedly cure the world of violence and war, but that it's a good idea for her to make this claim while the world is in the midst of violence and war. And it's for that reason, it's for the narcissism, that ultimately we must say um, the same thing I would say to Anna McCord if I was her mother. You're canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.